Hello and welcome to MATLAB Programming for Numerical Computations. We are in Module 4. In this module, we are covering solving linear equations of the type AX equal to B, where A is an n by n matrix and X and B are n-dimensional column vectors. Okay. In the previous lecture, what we had covered was a popular technique known as Gauss elimination followed by back substitution. In this lecture, we will take the example from the previous lecture and in order to do two different things, one is to look at a new method called LU decomposition and the second one is to look at partial pivoting in Gauss elimination. Okay, so let's consider the example from previous lecture that was uh, A was a 3 by 3 matrix as uh, we all know. Uh, X is a three dimensional vector containing X1, X2 and X3 whereas B is 4, 7 and 9. We solve this problem using Gauss elimination and back substitution and what we are going to do is take the same code from that we generated using MATLAB in the previous lecture and use it to do two things, LU decomposition and partial pivoting. Okay, so let's go to MATLAB and edit Gauss LM. Okay, so this was the code that we wrote in our previous lecture. Okay, so we will kind of just modify the code a little bit. Uh, so what we have done is with A11 as the pivot element, we just enumerated for row 2 and as well as for row 3. So let's just modify that and put in a for loop. So for i equal to 2 to 3 because we did this for row 2 over here and we did this for row 3 over here. So when i is equal to 2, Okay, everything that we have to, we can just replace it with i and see what we get. And let's see that. We'll replace a, b, i, a, b, i, and this is a, b, 1. So we don't have to change that. And, and we will just have to delete this, type end, and that should be good for us. And just indent it as appropriate. Okay. And for this particular case, again, what we are going to do is something like this. We will just say i equal to 3 because for i equal to 3 to 3 in this particular case. And alpha is going to be a b i comma 2 just as above divided by a b 2 comma 2. And a b i comma colon equal to a b of i comma colon minus alpha multiplied by a b of 2 col uh, comma colon. So we have done that and now let's run this and check if there are any errors. So I'll click on run and I will go to the MATLAB command prompt and type our x okay and also type a b matrix. Yes so a b matrix is indeed a lower triangular matrix and x the solution is indeed what we expect 1 to 1. Okay so we are happy with this change. Let's go back to PowerPoint. Okay, so what we did now is we took the Gauss elimination example from the previous lecture and modified it so that we use uh, basically loops in order to do the Gauss elimination computation. Okay, so let's go on to the next slide. LU decomposition. So what happens in an LU decomposition is as follows. Uh, Interested readers can go on and look at computational techniques course. Uh, it's the sister course of uh, this particular course. You can look at that course, uh, module number three, lecture three. And there uh, I have explained what LU decomposition is. And basically the idea behind LU decomposition is that any matrix A can be written as a product of the lower triangular matrix L and an upper triangular matrix U where the U matrix is nothing but the matrix that we obtained after Gauss elimination. What that means is our U matrix is nothing but this guy 1 1 1 0 minus 1 1 0 0 minus 4. That is our U matrix. What's our L matrix? Our L matrix is nothing but 1 1 1 as the diagonal elements and the alpha. Alpha are those ratios uh, of a a21 divided by a11 a31 divided by a11 a32 divided by a22 etc those ratios which we have already pre-computed in gauss elimination form the l matrix 
okay so what do we do so what do we need to do is u matrix is already obtained in gas gauss elimination so we don't really have to do anything about it what we need to do is to define that l matrix first as an identity matrix and afterwards as we do computations of gauss elimination just populate the uh, element a al sorry alpha 2 1 then populate element alpha 3 1 and alpha 3 2 and so on and so forth as we do the computations let's go on to matlab and what we will do is the gauss lm we will save as my lu code okay i will just change this lu d composition using naive gauss elimination okay everything remains the same what we need is the l matrix and the u matrix we don't need back substitution so let's go ahead and delete our back substitution okay now that we have deleted our back substitution our u matrix is nothing but a b from 1 to n comma 1 to n we do not want the b part of it so that's the reason why we are writing u in this particular manner now the question is how to obtain l as i had said earlier what we do with l is initialize that as an identity matrix e y e n okay so when we uh, initialize it as an identity matrix we are going to get ones as the diagonal elements the sub diagonal elements right now are all zeros and as we do the computation we are going to populate that particular matrix as well okay so what we need to do this alpha is nothing but the first column row 2 and row 3 so l row i that is row 2 and row 3 and the column number 1 is going to be nothing but alpha okay and we write that and that should be that should be good enough for us and the same thing we are going to write for our column number 2 as well so we are going to write this and this is not going to be column number 1 but this is going to be column number 2 so row number 3 column number 2 again is this alpha that was computed over here keep in mind that i am not writing this l before the alpha i am writing this l after the alpha and my lu code and i'll press enter hopefully we won't get any error no we did not so we look at our l matrix and we look at our u matrix so this is our l and this is our u matrix and let's take the product l multiplied by u and let's see what do we get and when we say a l multiplied by u we will get exact same a matrix back so that is what lu decomposition is and we go back once again to the code and see really what changes have we really made the only changes that we have made is this particular command l i comma one has been added in this overall computation and we initialize our l as identity matrix and finally we compute our u in this particular way so those are the only changes that we have had to make we save this and we quit So the idea of partial pivoting is as follows. So what we are doing in Gauss elimination is we use row exchange and row operations in order to do to get zeros in the sub diagonal elements in the elements below the diagonal. Okay. In the naive Gauss elimination, we just blindly use whatever so overall result that we have. We just keep blindly using that the matrix A. We blindly use that. In case of Gauss elimination with partial pivoting, what we are going to do is we are going to use row exchange in order to exchange it in such a way, exchange the rows in such a way that the pivot element is the largest value, the absolute value of the pivot element is the largest value in the pivot column. So in the first operation, when A11 is the pivot element, at that point, we look at all the coefficients in the first column okay and the largest coefficient is going to be swapped with row 1 in this case the largest coefficient happens to be 3 so we will swap these two equations and then do the first step of gauss elimination 
okay so let's go back to matlab and open our gauss elimination code okay and i will save this as gauss elimination with partial pivoting using gauss elimination Okay, so what I need to do is now A11 is the pivot element change to ensure A11 is the largest in column 1. Okay, so what that means is that we want to look at the column 1. So column 1 equal to AB, the entire uh, uh, row all the rows and in the first column so that's the column one we want to find which one is the largest and to do that we use the command called max how do we exchange row number one and three we, we remember a b three comma colon is nothing but the third row right so if we were to write a b three comma colon and assign it to a b one comma colon okay that is going to actually give us the third row and it will put the third row instead of the first row okay there is going to be a problem with this i will show you what that problem is by clicking enter okay now can you see what the problem was compare with our a b matrix can you actually see what the problem was Okay, the problem is this. By doing this, what is happening is we have now lost our first row. Okay, we now no longer know what our AB1, colon was. So, we need a way to store that AB1, colon and then uh, use this particular command. So, let's just copy this and go on to our editor and do this again. Before we do that, we need the max also and yeah okay and we want to store a b1 comma colon before we change the value of one comma colon so let's just reuse that variable dummy because anyway that variable was a dummy variable so dummy is nothing but a b one comma colon it's a temporary placeholder for the first row and a b three comma colon is nothing but dummy okay so let's save this and what we can do is this is Okay, I will just right click and click on evaluate selection and see what we get. If we type AB, we have seen that row number 3 has now been exchanged with what earlier was row number 1. So row exchange has happened. So this is how partial pivoting will work so this is partial pivoting what we have done over here is absolutely what partial pivoting is we did that with the first row when a11 was the pivot element okay computation in the pivot column okay and we repeat this row exchange ex C H A N G E exchange to okay and again we need to look at only the sub diagonal elements so call 2 is going to be equal to a b 2 to end comma 2 okay and as before just copy this
and dummy comma idx okay is this and dummy equal to ab2 comma colon ab2 comma colon equal to ab idx and ab idx equal to dummy and the same thing we're gonna do over here as well ab uh, one comma colon is going to be dummy okay ab one comma colon is nothing but ab idx comma colon and ab idx comma colon is going to be nothing but dummy okay so we have this and we continue with our gauss elimination so okay so let's save this and let's hope there are no errors we have run this and go back and check our ab is now it is a upper triangular matrix again over here okay but we have done this partial pivoting which has resulted in exchange of row number one and two in the first case okay and let's see what we get as the solution x after back substitution and after back substitution we notice that our x is exactly the same as before one two one so yes it does work and we want to find out let's say if the idx over here has changed or not so i can just type i think yes there was a mistake over here i think uh, this should be called to okay so yeah i don't i'm not sure why <laughs> this actually ran uh, probably it did because uh, yeah let's see how what ab is yes ab is different this time okay as you can see ab is different but x you are going to get as the correct solution one Two, one and you you'll see that in this particular case in this case of partial pivoting in this particular case a row exchange between two and three had happened in the second uh, uh, for the second uh, pivot element in this case the particular row exchange had not happened so that's the only difference between these two examples okay and we do get our x uh, solution as one to one using partial pivoting okay so that pretty much brings me to the end of this particular lecture okay what we have covered in this lecture are two concepts one is that of lu decomposition where the matrix a can be written as a product of a lower and an upper triangular matrix the upper triangular matrix was nothing but the solution obtained after gauss elimination and the lower triangular matrix was the matrix containing the alphas okay and the idea behind gauss elimination with partial pivoting was to use row exchanges in order to ensure that the aii is the largest element in that particular column when we are comparing with with sub diagonal elements only okay so with that we come to the end of this particular lecture thank you for listening and see you in the next lecture Bye.